welcome to Episode 5 of the Gem State Podcast. My name is Brian Allman. I'll start this week with some good news. The situation with the baby who was taken from his parents last week seems to have reached a temporary conclusion as the boy was reunited with his family, albeit with an explicit threat hanging over their heads that CPS can come in at any time to evaluate the situation and possibly seize the baby once more. As I said in my newsletter this week, I do not know the whole story here. Neither do most people. I have tried to maintain a focus on the bigger picture, the effects that this incident is having on the perception of justice and fairness in our system. Unfortunately, it has become a flashpoint in our greater political conflict. People make snap judgments based on their own preconceived notions. If you already don't trust the government, then you're going to back the family. If you don't like Ammon Bundy, then you'll say that it must be a political stunt and the family's in the wrong. If you're an ardent back-the-blue dogmatist, then you assume that whatever law enforcement does is right and proper. The truth, whatever it might be, does not matter so much as your own worldview. People naturally view the situation through the lens of their own biases, and we all have them. In the end, after stripping away all the political connotations, what we have is a family whose baby was taken from them by order of the state of Idaho. That is an awful thing to do, even if it is sometimes necessary. The burden of necessity must be placed as high as possible, lest this happen to more families, perhaps those whose lifestyles are simply different from what medical personnel or social workers would prefer. In the end, I am happy that the family has been reunited, and I hope that the child can grow healthy and strong without the threat of being seized by agents of the state at any given moment. Some in the conservative community have distanced themselves from the family, the Bundy campaign, the Freedom Man blog, and the rest who have been calling for protests at the hospital, at CPS offices, and even at the homes of the social workers who made the call to remove the child in the first place. While the idea of protests like that can be distasteful, especially when they spill over to private homes, we have to understand that if the system will not hold government agents accountable, then people will. This is not an endorsement, just an observation. That is why we must do whatever we can to make sure our government is held accountable for what it does with the authority we have given it. I finally had the opportunity to visit the Capitol this week. I will try next year to get down there more often and maybe even offer testimony on various bills. Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan hosted the final Capitol Clarity event, where she shared her experience trying to get the whole story about the baby and his family. She also hosted a press conference on the Capitol steps, where she laid out her vision for the state. Her platform looks sound. I am anticipating the upcoming debates between all the candidates, and hopefully we will soon see some good polling so we can get a better idea of which challenger is best positioned to oust Governor Brad Little. That should be the primary mission of Idaho conservatives, no matter which candidate you personally support. The Kootenai County Republican Party, which I regard as one of the most hardcore conservative groups in the state, recently held their straw poll, and they came down firmly on the side of the lieutenant governor. Take that for what you will. Even more interesting to me was how they came down in support of Raul Labrador for attorney general, rather than their hometown candidate, Art McCumber. As I said in my newsletter on the attorney general race, I like Mr. McCumber a lot, and I think he is a solid constitutional conservative. But Mr. Labrador clearly has the momentum. Labrador spoke to the Reagan Club here in Eagle in January and explained that he would like to create a position in the Attorney General's office to deal with constitutional matters. I think Mr. McCumber would be a perfect choice for that position. Primary campaigns can be very contentious, as each Republican candidate tries to convince voters to pick them. Sometimes the best way to do that is to attack their opponents. Everybody decries this sort of campaigning, but it's undeniably effective. The important thing is to not burn your bridges, because in the end, all of us, or at least most of us, are on the same side. 
Once the primary campaigns are done, we all need to work together toward our shared goals of maintaining traditional values in Idaho. I want to see McCumber and Labrador work with each other to improve constitutional governance of our state. I want to see McGeehan and Ed Humphreys team up to root out the corruption that has infected our government. Let's have the debates, pick our champion, and then join together to do what needs to be done. Because our government is severely broken. The 2022 Idaho Legislative Session is likely to come to an end next week. While a few good bills were passed and sent to the governor, many important measures died in committee. That is a story we hear all too often. You see, our legislature plays a game with the voters. Your local representatives and your senator will come to you hat in hand asking for donations and votes and volunteer time, showing you all the great bills that they intend to support in the coming session. Once elected, they introduce their bills, but wouldn't you know it, the committee chair didn't bring it up for a vote. Well, what are you going to do? The truth is that the whole thing is a puppet show put on for your benefit. Your representatives and your senator know that these bills will be killed in committee. I suspect that they are explicitly told this by chamber leadership. This allows them to play both sides. They can prove their conservative bona fides on the campaign trail, but tell their big business lobbyist friends that they're holding the line. By killing these bills in committee, the chairs of those committees make sure nobody has to actually commit to voting one way or another. Legislators can tell their voters that they would have supported the bill while signaling to the lobbyists that there was never any danger of it passing. This also saves the governor from having to either veto a bill that is popular with Idaho conservatives or to sign it and anger his corporate masters. These political games must end if we're to restore traditional values and save our state from the Marxist progressive tidal wave that is sweeping over our country. A single Senate committee chair should not have the ability to kill a bill passed by their counterparts in the House without a vote. The same vice versa. I have asked several legislators and party officials over the past few months if there is any way to force a committee to take a vote taking ultimate power out of the hands of the chairs. Unfortunately, it sounds like that would take a two-thirds vote in each chamber to alter their own rules. And I doubt many legislators would be willing to support a measure that would take away the plausible deniability they currently enjoy. The biggest threat to liberty in Idaho today is not the Democratic Party, nor the Marxists who dominate our media and social institutions, but the big business lobby groups that allow them room to destroy. Groups like IACI, the Idaho Association of Commerce and Industry, do not represent the people, but big business interests, often from out of state or even out of the country. Do you think that they will support measures to stop banks and financial firms from using ESG scores to promote Marxist causes? No. Groups like IACI are putting pressure on our legislature to oppose any attempt to curtail ESG. Unfortunately, what IACI wants, IACI gets. Governor Brad Little is the former chairman of that lobby group, and he listens to what they have to say. His administration is full of IACI lackeys. Nothing will change so long as we continue to rubber stamp career politicians when they ask for our votes. Governor Little... Senate Pro Tem Chuck Winder, Speaker Scott Bedke, and the committee chairs they appoint are all in this game together. They will dangle a few good conservative bills before us while conniving with their big business lobby friends to make sure that we the people never mount a serious challenge to their hegemony. IACI and other lobby groups use their influence to kill good bills. Then they turn around and unload dump trucks full of money to make sure their puppet legislators are re-elected year after year. The first step toward rooting out the corruption in our state government is to remove the politicians who are owned by the lobbies. Get out there and campaign for people who are challenging these elected officials in the primary. Go knock on doors for Rosa Martinez, who's challenging Mr. Winder in District 20. Donate your time and energy to Representative Cody Galloway, 
in her campaign against the awful Senator Fred Martin in District 15. Give some money to Priscilla Giddings, who's trying to stop Mr. Bedke from becoming our next lieutenant governor, and someday the governor. Take a good hard look at your own three delegates. Are they working for you or for the big business lobbyists? Are they really trying to push good bills through the legislature, or are they playing games? If they're not working for you, then it's time for them to go. If nobody's challenging them this year, then maybe you will be the one to dethrone them in 2024. It's time to stop playing games and start saving our state. (music) 